So the original Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera isn't really known for its low light capabilities. But what do the images look like for all the different ISO settings on the camera? To test this I set up two different tests. One with a bit of a darker scene with a lot of black in it, and also one with some more highlights and an overall brighter tone to the image. I shot both ProRes and RAW for each scene, and when shooting RAW I also added a fake 3200 ISO option, which I achieved by using ISO 1600 and then pushing the exposure by one stop in the camera RAW tab of DaVinci Resolve. And for these tests I didn't just set the aperture and shutter and then raise the ISO, I think it's very important to have a properly exposed image at each ISO when actually testing the ISO performance, so instead I used the shutter to compensate. If I raised the ISO by one stop, I then used a shutter that was one stop slower. And that will allow us to have a consistent exposure across all different ISOs. And with the exception of shutter, all other settings stay the same. And when talking about ISO for the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera, it's important to understand that the native ISO of the camera is 800. This is the ISO that Blackmagic tuned the camera for, so this is where you'll see the best balance between highlights and shadows in terms of dynamic range. By shifting the ISO you will also shift the amount of shadow and highlight latitude you have above or below middle grey. So for these tests I won't be saying what the acceptable noise levels are, I'll leave that up to you so you can make up your own mind, but after each test I will be giving you just my general thoughts of the test. So let's roll the first test and I'll see you afterwards. As you can see from these tests, a lower ISO will obviously give you cleaner images, but it's not the ISO per se that's making the images cleaner, it's the fact that when we're using a lower ISO, we have to let more light into the sensor to achieve the same exposure. And more light reaching the sensor means less noise. And that ties in with what I said earlier about ISO shifting dynamic range. It's not the ISO setting in itself, it's the fact that if we light for ISO 200 instead of let's say ISO 1600, we will let in much more light to the sensor, and therefore in this case we will have more dynamic range in the shadows. But in this test we didn't have any real highlights, so let's look at test 2, where we do have some highlights.
And as you can see in this test as well, lower ISO means less noise. But we can also see what happens to the highlights. The ISO 200 option has the lamp completely blown out, but if we look at ISO 800, we still retain a lot of information in the lamp. Again, this isn't about the actual ISO setting of the camera, it's about the amount of light reaching the sensor. At ISO 800 we let in one quarter the amount of light compared to ISO 200, since we're now using a shutter of 45 degrees compared to 180 degrees. And this makes more sense if we look at the way RAW works. If we take the clip that was properly exposed at ISO 200, and then bring it into DaVinci Resolve and raise the ISO to 800, we don't magically gain back that highlight information. It's still gone. Now we're instead just overexposing the entire image. And that's because it's the amount of light we let into the sensor while exposing for a specific ISO that actually affects the dynamic range. So if you're trying to determine what ISO to shoot at, remember that the native ISO of the camera is 800. But if you're shooting a very, very dark scene with a lot of shadows that you want to retain information in, then using a lower ISO might be beneficial, but keep in mind that you now need more light to properly expose the scene to compensate for the lower ISO. But that wraps it up for this video. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you want to see some more, and I'll see you next time.